Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the 2017 Microeconomics Exam, question number three. This one is all about market failures and government intervention. This one has a really tricky graph because it combines monopoly with negative externalities. And when it showed up on the exam, it threw off a lot of students. But it's not too bad if you take it one step at a time. Let's get into it. So let's do this thing! So this is an interesting graph we've got here. We have the marginal social cost there, labeled MSC. We have the marginal private cost, labeled MPC. The marginal social benefit, labeled MSB. And the demand, along with the marginal revenue curve for a monopoly. Since you've probably never seen a graph like this before, it can look very confusing. But like most other monopoly graphs you've seen, we have the demand, average revenue, and price here. And that is equal to the marginal social benefit here and the marginal revenue curve is below the demand. The difference here between a normal monopoly and this monopoly is that we have two upward sloping marginal cost curves. The lower one is the marginal private cost and the higher one is the marginal social cost. That's the cost to society for the product as a whole. The first part of the question here, we have to identify the monopolist profit maximizing quantity. Remember, like all other firms, a monopoly will profit maximize where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Which one of these curves is the firm's marginal cost curve? It's the marginal private cost because those are the private costs that fall on the producers of the product. Let me add it there with MC. There's our marginal revenue curve below the demand like you find it most often with monopolies. Find that MR equals MC point, drop down, that gives us our profit maximizing quantity of Q3. All you have to do to get this point is say Q3. The next question asks us to identify the profit maximizing price for this monopoly. Like other monopolies, they get the price from the demand curve above the marginal revenue equals marginal cost point. So from our profit maximizing quantity of Q3, there's our marginal cost equals marginal revenue point. Head up till you hit the demand curve, over to the price axis, and that gives us P4 as our profit maximizing price. Again, just identify it, P4. Question B asks us to identify what information we see on this graph that indicates there is a negative externality within this market. All you have to do is look at the marginal cost curves there, the marginal private cost is the lower one, the marginal social cost is the upper one, and the difference between the marginal private cost and the marginal social cost is the spillover cost or benefit. And since that marginal social cost is greater than the marginal private cost, that gap between the two curves is a spillover cost, which means that it is a negative externality. And all you have to do here is say that marginal social cost is greater than marginal private cost and you got yourself a point. For the next part, we're going to identify the socially optimal quantity. Socially optimal quantities are the allocatively efficient quantities. That means that marginal social benefit is going to equal marginal social cost. Where is that quantity? Find those two curves, there they are. And the intersection between the two is at that point there. Drop down, and that gives us a allocatively efficient, socially optimal quantity of Q3. Just identify it, and you've got your point, Q3. For part D, we have a new assumption that the government is going to impose a per unit tax on this product. The amount of the tax is going to be equal to the marginal external cost. The marginal external cost is the vertical distance between the marginal social cost and the marginal private cost. It is that spillover cost that we identified earlier. There it is again on the graph, and we can see that the vertical distance between those two curves, just head over to the axes to find it, it's the difference between P4 and P1. Set it up like a math problem here, P4 minus P1, and that is the dollar value of the tax using the labels on the graph. Next, we're going to identify the profit maximizing quantity as a result of the tax. In order to figure that out, we have to realize that the per unit tax is going to shift the marginal cost for the firm upward the vertical distance of that tax. On this graph, the marginal private cost is the firm's marginal cost. So with that tax, it's going to shift that marginal cost upward to the tax plus the marginal cost being equal to the marginal social cost. So with that tax, we have a new MR equals MC point at that intersection, drop below, and that gives us our new profit maximizing quantity of Q2. To get that point, just identify it, Q2. Now it's part E that makes this question so interesting, in my opinion. We have a firm that produces a negative externality and the government is imposing a per unit tax, but it's a monopoly. So will that per unit tax increase, decrease, or not change 
dead weight loss. And we've got to explain it here, so that means we have to connect it to the math or the graph to get the answer. Well, first of all, we should take a look at the amount of dead weight loss we had prior to the tax. Now, a dead weight loss triangle is formed by three points. The first one is the marginal social cost of the current quantity, and that happens to be right there at Q3. The next point is the marginal social cost of the current quantity. Again, for Q3, it's right there. And then the third point is the marginal social benefit equals marginal social cost. One more time, that is the same point right there. As a result, the triangle is formed by one point in the same spot. There is no area here and there is no dead weight loss. And that's because in a perfectly competitive market with a negative externality, we will be overproducing that product and we should underproduce to achieve the allocatively efficient outcome. With a monopoly, we already underproduce. And so with a monopoly, increasing production will usually result in less dead weight loss. Since this monopoly is underproducing the exact right amount, it is already allocatively efficient and producing the socially optimal output. And if we switch to the after-tax quantity of Q2, we can find the marginal social benefit of the quantity right there. We can find the marginal social cost of that quantity right there. And the allocatively efficient point where marginal social benefit equals marginal cost. Calculate the area there, and that would give us a triangle of dead weight loss. And so after the tax, there is dead weight loss. And so to get this point, you say increase because the firm produces the socially optimal quantity before the tax and less than the socially optimal quantity after the tax. And you've got your point. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are on your way to acing your next economics exam. If you like this video, please like and subscribe below. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Then head over to reviewecon.com where you can find lots of games and activities to help you practice the skills necessary in economics. If you wanna support this channel even more, head over to reviewecon.com and purchase the total review booklet with everything you need to know to do well on the microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time.